Just when I thought I was out of doing manga haul videos, Right Stuff pulls me back in. So anyone who has ordered from Right Stuff Anime during the COVID-19 pandemic probably is aware of the situation they were having with their shipping. Right Stuff Anime, when not faced with shipping issues caused by a global pandemic, is usually one of the best retailers to buy anime and manga from. However, with the shipping issues, stock issues, everything like that caused by the pandemic, Right Stuff stopped doing partial shipments for a while. Over time, there's been a backlog built up of the manga that I have had in stock at Right Stuff that's really just been sitting around in their warehouse. But the times, they are a-changing, and we are getting back to partial shipments. And so we've got one box, a smaller box. Oh man, I can't put these all up here. Oh man. Another big box. Oh, it's gonna fall over. Oh no. And a third big box. So that is a lot of manga. And now, truth be told, I don't fully know what's in here. Because I've been waiting on so much manga to be shipped out all this time, I've honestly forgotten a lot of what I've ordered. So this is stuff that's been ordered since I think back in... I think the earliest one that had not shipped out was like late 2020. I'm not gonna call this May manga haul or anything because I did buy some other manga. Half Price Books came in clutch with some Boruto, some Eyes, a few other things, but this is its own haul. This is the Right Stuff Extravaganza Bonanza In Stock Shipping Partial Return Post COVID haul. More than likely, a lot of these are volume ones or series that I just haven't started yet, so I can't talk at length about them anyway. So, uh, here we go. Okay, so we have something, uh, a little bit of a throwback here, Cardcaptor Sakura. Uh, I watched Cardcaptor Sakura on TV as a kid. Remember really liking it. Uh, I don't know, there was something about it. Maybe it was because I also liked Yu-Gi-Oh! So the clue cards, they kind of had an interesting spark to me. I've got volumes one and two of the Kodansha Collector's Edition hardcovers. And I'm excited to get back into this series because it's been so long since I've done anything with a card captor Sakura. Moving right along, we have volume five of ZOM 100, Bucket List of the Dead. If you're unfamiliar, zombie apocalypse, guy has a bucket list, he's gonna try to do it before he dies because hey, he's gonna die. It's zombie apocalypse. So it's about trying to fulfill all those last wishes and desires to do before you die. Next up, we've got a little bit of One Piece, volumes 98 and volume 99. So I'm behind on One Piece. The way I read One Piece is I actually read an entire arc and then I wait for the next arc to finish because it's so long, it takes forever for an arc to complete and I forget what's happened. So I like to just read the arcs in one go. The downside is everything for me is spoiled on Twitter, Reddit, whatever. So I'm a little upset about that because Wano is winding down right now in Japan and I pretty much know the majority of what happens, which is sad. We have Ninja Slayer. Oh, this is confusing. How do I turn this? Is this correct? Yes. Okay. Volume 1 by Vertical Comics. So I was in a comic shop a few weeks ago and I passed by some volumes of Ninja Slayer, Ninja Slayer Kills, a couple of other things, and I thought, huh, why haven't I tried Ninja Slayer yet? That seems like a, you know, moderately big thing. So I know that it didn't, I think, get a complete run in English, which is a bit sad, but I got volume one, picked it up. I think the Ninja Slayer Kills volume one is probably in one of these boxes as well because I know I bought that too. So if it was in stock, it's probably in one of these. Next up from Seven Seas, Gal Gohan volume seven. So all I know about this is it's a cooking-ish manga with maybe a little bit of a cheesecake here and there. It sounds like your typical Seven Seas manga. People say it's really enjoyable, really wholesome. So I'm looking forward to uh, trying it. Yona of the Dawn, Volume 9. I think this actually does bring me up to current with Volume 9. I think I have everything before that. So I can at least get that far. But I was really enjoying this title when I started it. So yeah, another one that I really want to continue. Volumes 14 and 15 of Hiromu Arakawa's. 
Heroic Legend of Arslan. This is based on, I believe, a novel by Yoshiki Tanaka. Really love Arakawa stuff, and Arslan is one that I'm really just kind of holding off to see. If it finishes anytime soon, I can then just read the whole thing in one go. Because it's, it is a slower release schedule, so it's like a lot of the manga where I don't want to wait four to five months, pick up a volume, forget what's happened, so I just kind of stockpile them and then we'll read them all in one go. A new title from Yen Press is From the Red Fog. All I really know about this is that it's at the turn of the 19th century, a little bit of steampunk, a little bit of, I think, murder, assassin stuff. Could be wrong. This is by Mozai Nohara, and I don't recognize that name, so I'm not sure if there's anything else that they've published, but uh, yeah, the art I really just liked, and it drew me in, so it's one that I'm looking forward to starting. Another volume one from Seven Seas is Colorless. This one is, I think, about like the loss of color in the world and the people that are trying to hunt down the remnants. I will open this one up because it's really cool how they do the coloring in this where you have the black and white of your typical manga but then there's splashes of color where they're finding the color so uh, it looks really cool I think it's a cool sounding concept and the art seems great too so yeah another one I'm really looking forward to trying on the Shonen Jump backlog I have Rollo Mega Grad. This was one I remember reading a little bit of when it was first coming out in the Shonen Jump magazine that was published in English, and I really just never followed up on it. My goal right now though is to complete my Shonen Jump collection, and this is one of the titles that I was missing, so I ordered the volumes Right Stuff had, and volume two's here. I don't know if there's gonna be the volume three in these boxes anywhere. But yeah, it's just a very short Shonen Jump title. Can't, can't tell you anything more than that. Next up we have volume one of World's End Harem Fantasia. I haven't gotten into the actual World's End Harem. It was a little bit, what I did try of it wasn't too much my speed. Again, like I said about, do you like big girls? I don't like that much cheesecake in my manga. So uh, I heard that this one actually was a little bit better and I'm guessing it's the same as World's End Harem but in a fantasy world from what I know, not totally sure could be totally off base about that but yeah um we'll give this a try eventually <laughs> it's not really a priority to read volume five of black clover so i can now continue that series because this was my only gap all the way through volume 20 shuzo oshimi's devil's ecstasy so oshimi is known for a lot of coming of age works and i'm assuming this is going to be not much different the synopsis talks about a guy walking into a brothel and finding out that the ladies there are not exactly what they seem don't know what that means. Oshimi's works sometimes get a mixed reputation, but there's still typically a good narrative underneath about coming of age, finding out about yourself, and just coming into your own as a person. Next up, After the Rain, Volume 1 from Vertical Comics. I picked up Volume 2 a long time ago. Don't remember why, but I somehow don't have Volume 1. I watched a little bit of the anime for this and remember liking it, but it's about this girl who has a crush on uh, her manager and just the feelings that evolve through that. I believe it's overall a very wholesome manga. So I'm excited to actually try this more after watching a little bit of the anime. Next up I have volumes four and five of Go With The Clouds North by Northwest. I was just really drawn in by the amazing covers of these. I have the first three volumes already and it's another one that because the release schedule is so slow, I just have not read it, but I've thumbed through it, read a little bit of the synopsis, and it just sounds like this grand adventure of exploring a lot of places of the world. And I think there's a, like a mystery involved. This is a series that if nothing else, just I love having for the beautiful covers. They're phenomenal. Coming through this, I noticed that the ink in volume five goes from black to like, blue almost i don't know if that's supposed to be how it happens or if the ink just suddenly got bad it starts with a specific chapter so that makes me think maybe it's on purpose so anyway just an interesting little tidbit <laughs> and that is box one done okay on to what is the heaviest box first off we have four and five of grand blue dreaming and I talked a little bit about this in my reading log video where it wasn't really 
up to par with what I was wanting from this series. It was a little too comedy focused for my taste, but I had volumes one through three already and the rest of the series went on sale for a bit. So I did pick up two more volumes because I do really like the art in this and I like the synopsis and I'm really gonna try to give it a fair shot because I know so many people really swear by this series. Next up from Titan Comics, we have Odo Yoshimizu's Hinkai Pan. I might be pronouncing that wrong. I don't know too much about this other than I think that this is a collection of short stories or maybe not short stories, but just individual tales. And it largely covers like a lot of philosophy and ecology themes. Really, I was just drawn in by the cover. I thought it looked really neat. So I don't really know what I'm getting into with this. It's going to be a totally blind pick. Next up from Jiro Taniguchi, I have the Ice Wanderer, which is upside down. This is a collection of stories that pays tribute to the works of Jack London. And I picked this up because I was really enjoying Summit of the Gods by Jiro Taniguchi. And I just thought I wanted to try more works by Taniguchi. So I picked this up. <laughs> That's all I can really say. But also the cover just looked interesting. I thought it was a really clean looking cover. Covers honestly are a lot of the time what draws me into buying a manga because I just am a sucker for a good looking piece of art on the cover of a book. Speaking of Summit of the Gods, we have volume two. I was reading volume one and had not picked up volume two even though I found another volume on sale in a bookshop. Picked that up already. Summit of the Gods though is about this unraveling mystery where a camera is discovered believed to belong to George Mallory who climbed Mount Everest or attempted to climb Mount Everest back in the 1920s and was never really seen again. So it's about trying to really uncover what happened and the secrets of that climb on Mount Everest and there might even be more mysteries unraveling but that was the general synopsis of volume one. I really enjoyed it, had a great time. Looking forward to reading the whole series. Next up from Tokyo Pop but also Write Stuff's On Demand printing we have Aria the Masterpiece, Volume 7, I got these out of order, 5, and 6. So what I know about Aria is this is a story about uh, a girl wanting to become a gondolier in a city that is essentially a, a new version of Venice. And that's really as much as I know about the story, but it sounded really cool and I know that once these books are gone, they're not going to be coming back in print because Right Stuff uh, initially ran out of these and then said, hey, we're going to be printing a whole new set of them and this is going to be your only chance to ever get them because it's the last printing we're doing. And I had the other volumes already and I said, shoot, let's go ahead, pick up the rest of the set. So I'm happy to have these because it does sound like a great story. This is one that I think I'm really going to enjoy once I get the time to unfold its covers and reveal its secrets. Next up we have what I believe is the next to last volume of the Full Metal edition of Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist, still my favorite manga. I know that's a mixed opinion. A lot of people say that and then a lot of people say, wow, that's a terrible opinion. I love Full Metal Alchemist so much and these hard covers, they to me leave a little bit to be desired, but I'm still happy to have them in my collection. So yeah when i get the 18th volume i'm actually really looking forward to doing a complete reread of the series next up i have volume one of minoji karada's assassin's creed blade of shaojun and again probably saying that wrong uh this was one that i don't know much about assassin's creed but the art looked cool so you can tell when i go on to write stuff or other retailers and there's a sale if i need to meet a threshold for free shipping, I really just go and look, hey, what looks cool? <laughs> what do I know nothing about that looks cool? So yeah, uh, I'm guessing this is, takes place in the world of Assassin's Creed, the video games. Next up from Dempa, we have Gambling Apocalypse Kaiji. I'm largely through the first volume of this. I think this is pretty much considered one of the classic gambling mangas where you have the psychological thriller element. And I've enjoyed what I've read so far uh, It's just very, it's a very human story for being as, uh, again, thriller-ish as it is. If you kind of sort of liked Kakigurui, but were turned off a little bit by how absurd it could be at times, I recommend trying Kaiji because I think it might be a little bit more your speed if you really just want some good stories about gambling. Another pickup for the Shonen Jump collection is Ryu Fujisaki's Hoshinengi Volume 3. I don't know much about Hoshinengi. 
I hope too soon once I can find more volumes. So yeah, there's volume three. From Seven Seas, we have Hiroya Oku's Gigant Volume 6. I enjoyed what I read of Gigant. It's not good, but I enjoyed it. Basically, Lady Grows Giant and fights other giant beings. That That's your synopsis. And I think it ends on Volume 9 or 10. I can't remember which. So we're getting relatively close to the end here in English. I believe Volume 7 actually came out recently. From Kodansha, Gleipner, Volume 10. I liked Gleipner a lot. I got through volume, I think six or seven, and then it was one of those series that it was taking months upon months upon months for more volumes to come out. And I just said, forget it. I'm gonna collect them and then I'll finish it all in one go. It's just a really interesting turn into monsters and fight battle type series. I liked it. Looking forward to the rest. From Udon, we have the Rose of Versailles volume one. And I just know that Rose of Versailles is largely a classic. I wanted to give it a chance, try it out for myself because I've heard good things about it and it is one of those enduring titles that you just hear about over the years and it doesn't really fade completely from the public mind. So to me, that speaks volumes about the quality of the Rose of Versailles or at least the impact it had on uh, the mediums in general. Volume 1 of A Galaxy Next Door. Synopsis is about this manga artist who gets an assistant that's a little bit off and that's really all I know about it. I don't know if it's going to turn into a sci-fi, if it's going to turn into just a general romance or what. But uh, it's by the person who did Sweetness and Lightning which I am a fan of. So I have, again, high expectations for this. Volume 1 of Alice in Borderland. And I'll be honest, I thought this was going to be a hardcover. A little bit disappointed there, but nonetheless, I'm a fan of death game type stuff. So Alice in Borderland was one of my most looking forward to pickups of the year. This is one that quite frankly, I'm surprised didn't come over sooner, but I'm happy we have it now. From K Sambe, Island in a Puddle, Volume 1. This is by the creator of Erased, which I really did like, even though I'm not the biggest fan of how it ended. So it's just another story that I'm looking forward to from that creator. Continuing the trend of manga I know absolutely nothing about, I got My Broken Mariko from Yen Press, which sounds like a story about someone who passed away and their friend is trying to really make that last journey with them, with their ashes and just go on an adventure to really try to fulfill what was left unfulfilled. And that's again, just my guess and interpretation from what I know about this series, but I was drawn in by the cover and I think it's going to be just a solid read because it's a single book so it's not much of an investment. I thought, hey, I'll give it a chance. Box two. Done. Let's save the, uh, the larger box for last and we're going to dive into this smaller box actually. Okay, so we have the collector's edition or yeah, complete collector's edition of Yoshitoki Oima's A Silent Voice and this is a lot bigger than I was expecting. <laughs> I love A Silent Voice. It is one of my favorite manga and I could not pass up a chance to get a complete collection hardcover of it. Even though the cover leaves a little bit to be desired. I think some complete collection over in Europe got like a really nice cover art for this. So it's a little disappointing to see this which I believe is just like the broken up volume 1 or volume 2 cover. A Silent Voice about a deaf girl and her former bully reconnecting and trying to make amends for what was wrong in the past. And I, I love it. I highly recommend this to everyone. It's probably my second favorite manga. And then what was delayed for forever, volumes 15, 16, and 17 of Real Account, which is another sort of death game where these people are uh, put into games that are based upon like social media followings and your clout, basically. I really enjoyed what I read of the first like six volumes until I just shelved it away and decided to finish it later. It's largely ridiculous, kind of stupid, but I had a good time with it. It was just, it was stupid fun is what it was. And I'm sad that Kodansha is doing these collected three volume things, but it's better than them totally dropping the series. So I'll at least take that. But you know me, I like having my cover art. So it's a bit sad not to see all three cover arts. Small box. Done. Okay, I was right. Here is the Ninja Slayer Kills Volume 1. Um, 
I really don't know too much of the difference between them because I'm not well versed. All right, we have Hitomi Chan is shy with chain. Hitomi Chan. Hitomi Chan. Hitomi Chan is. Next up, we have Hitomi Chan is shy with strangers. Haha, -ha, nailed it. This falls in the same vein as that recent trend of series of girl who has somewhat social problems and or girl who is helping boy who has some kind of social problems it's in that same vein so you you kind of know what you're expecting with this um it's it's hitomi and she is shy with strangers volume three of raul grad did i just totally forget that this was by the artist of death note takeshi obata uh the story is by suneo takano but yeah i completely forgot that the art was by the death note uh artist i feel like i knew that a long time ago and it just totally slipped my mind Shonen Jump Train again, Volume 1, Buso Rinkin. It's just one of those series that I hadn't even started in my collection yet, so I picked up Volume 1 to give it a shot. Volume 3 of Gumblaze West, and hey, look, you can uh, win a trip to Japan. I remember when those were coming out, there were like a lot of collectible stickers, and you could sign up for the trip to Japan, and you were supposed to get like bonus prizes for sending in a certain amount of uh, postcards or collection things. I don't know. I sent in a lot of stuff, never received anything little bit sad it's i think like a western type uh shonen jump series but it's only three volumes if you're just looking for something short maybe check it out i don't think it's really <laughs> that well renowned speak of the devil it's volume one so i can read the series now okay so yes it's about people who are trying to be gunfighters so yes very western vibe but very short series not a long commitment pretty simple easy read i think we have volumes 8, 9, and 10 of Hiroshi Shiwashi's Nura Rise of the Yokai Clan. This is one that I had a few volumes of and I wasn't super into it, but I know a lot of people do like this and the series is starting to go out of print everywhere or at least out of stock. So I did pick up the next few volumes that I needed of what was in stock on Right Stuff, though I now have a small gap like in the middle of the series. but. I will say the art for this series looks really phenomenal and it ran for some time having somewhere in the 20s in terms of volumes I believe so it's got to be doing something right. God I am such a sucker though for spines that do like this where you just have one character on them. Love it. Mm, it's perfect. It looks so great on the shelf. Volume 30 of My Hero Academia so I can finally finally read some more of this and then wait forever for volume 31 to come in so. That's the sad thing about being almost caught up. And man, this printing, the, the cover doesn't quite extend out to the pages. I don't know if you can see that at all, but that's a little bit annoying there, unfortunately. Next up from Hiro Mashima, I have volume one of Fairy Tale, volume seven of Fairy Tale, I picked up the wrong one, and volume two of Fairy Tale. I actually had the first like six volumes at one point and I don't know what happened to my first two of them. They just totally vanished. So I picked up volumes one and two again and I've actually gotten a couple of box sets on sale recently. And so Fairy Tale was something I think I'm not going to love, but I think it's gonna be one of those series where it's fine. I'm enjoying it enough to continue reading it. So I want to give it a shot at least through what I have currently, but to do that I needed to pick up volumes 1 and 2 again because I had completely forgotten what had happened in those volumes. We have volume 1 of Freyrene Beyond Journey's End. I know this is a great series from what people have said, and I know it touches a lot on loss and how that impacts people's lives. I think this is supposed to take place after like the adventure party has uh, save the kingdom or whatever and then it's it's like about how their lives go after that fact and I think that's a really interesting take on this sort of saving the kingdom saving the fantasy land concept Moriarty the Patriot so this is a take on Sherlock Holmes rival Moriarty about before he became the uh, antagonist of Sherlock Holmes greatest stories and I don't know much more about it than that I thought that synopsis sounded cool so I wanted to check this out and I've heard good things about it from the people who have read it. We have volumes 1 and 2 combined in an omnibus, Darling in the Franx. This is by Kentaro Yabuki who I believe is the artist for, um, ow, ow, this is a heavy book. Uh, it's the artist for Ayakashi Triangle I believe as well as Black Cat. So. 
I liked the anime a lot for this up until precisely the halfway point and then it just nosedived really hard. So I've heard this has a different ending from the anime, hopefully a better ending. We'll see. Again, I wish that we didn't get them in Omnibus because I liked a lot of the covers for this series, but I'll take what I can get. So next up we have volumes 1 and 2 of Rikito Nakamura and Yokiko Nozawa's The 100 Girlfriends Who Really, 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 Really Love You. And this is supposed to be a, I think like a comedy, uh, etchy harem a little bit. Less on the etchy, I think. But this guy ends up getting 100 girlfriends. And it's really, I think, making true on that promise of introducing 100 different girls that he has to, I think... Um, reciprocate their feelings for him or they will die. Um, yeah, so it escalated a little bit quickly there. I think this is going to be a really fun read though. I, I, it sounds like such a ridiculous concept, but I've heard it's really good. We have volumes 3 and 4 of Battle Angel Alita Mars Chronicle. And Battle Angel Alita is as a whole a series that I have put off for a while, even though I really liked what I read of it. It's just I, I haven't finished it for one reason or another. Spine a little bit misprinted there. Anyway, um, I just like the whole world of Battle Angel Alita from, again, what I have read. Volumes 4 and 5 of the Quintessential Quintuplets. I had volumes 1 through 3, and I wanted to pick up uh, some additional volumes because I really like the anime for this. It has its ups and downs, at least in anime form, but I'm interested to see how the manga carries the story. Volume 1 of 2.5 Dimensional Seduction from Seven Seas. All I really know about this is there's a girl who's cosplaying and she gets a guy to become her photographer. Um, and yeah, I, 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 it had a good cover. It had a good cover. The last Seven Seas title is Versailles of the Dead. And I picked this up when I saw that uh, Seven Seas was actually going to continue releasing this series because I think it had been quite a while between Volume 2 and the announcement of Volume 3 coming out. It's about um, Marie Antoinette's brother, I believe, being attacked by zombies. So it's like an alternate history fictional zombie apocalypse thing. It just sounded so interesting from that concept alone that I had to get this. More Hiro Mashima works, Volume 11 and Volume 12 of Eden Zero. I actually really liked what I read of Eden Zero. I mean, it wasn't, you know, anything amazing, but I had a good time with like the first four or five volumes. And so I've been picking up the rest of them over time to eventually read the little chunks, probably finish kind of like I'm doing with One Piece, read them in arcs. And then the last book is Volume 1 of ReZero The Frozen Bond. I love ReZero. And as much as I love it, I have not been keeping up as much as I should with the manga, the light novels, etc. I just, I love the anime and I've been collecting the books but haven't done a full dive into them. But The Frozen Bond is one I'm interested in because I think it either tells the story of the OVA that ReZero had or it's like a side story that hasn't been animated yet. I'm not totally sure. And that does it for the third big box and the fourth box overall, which brings us to our conclusion. So it's a very mixed bag. I, I think some of the books are in frame here. I can't see because the camera is turned away from me. But uh, yeah, we had a lot of books today. And there's a lot in here that I'm looking forward to reading and a lot in here that will probably just wait around until I get more volumes of them. So uh, uh, let me know, though, if you know of any of these series that you highly recommend that you were looking forward to or what right stuff has been holding hostage for you that you recently received in the mail, because I'm sure I'm not the only one who just got a huge blessing of manga delivered to their doorstep. Anyway, I appreciate you joining me today for this unboxing video. I had a good time just remembering all the stuff that I had coming to me eventually, and I hope you enjoyed seeing some new titles maybe that you weren't aware of, or seeing someone uh, just pick out some titles that you are a fan of. So thanks again for joining me, and I will see you next time.